Okay, and remember at the trucking shred, um, there's a huge diversity of people here. Um, any surprises in that diversity? And can you make, comment on why we need such diversity? The trucking industry, like many industries, is really quite complicated when you dig into it. There are people of many shapes and sizes who uh, own or operate trucks. There are suppliers of technology. There are makers of trucks and trailers. Those are different. <clears throat> and uh, there are people who do uh, finance, analysis, uh, lobbying, you name it. Uh, and altogether, there are some dozens of categories of people who need to be in the room if you're going to come up with real innovation. But they, we, we are learning a great deal from each other because normally they just talk to their own piece of the tribe. And uh, <clears throat> now that we've, we've got a, a broader collection, the conversations get very stimulating. You were talking about Muda a minute ago, and there's a lot of Muda in different parts of the trucking system, whether it's logistics or how they buy capital equipment. Um, have there been any, any surprises for you in massive amounts of Muda in one particular area or considerable amounts of Muda or any surprises for you, anything that really stands out? Well, some are very well known, like the <clears throat> trucks that run around empty trying to get back to where they're needed and uh, there are some mechanisms emerging in, in North America and in Europe where uh, computer networks will help drivers dispatch home with uh, loads. There's actually one Br British retailer that claims to have 95% full backhauls. Uh, <clears throat> then when you dig further into uh, what's shipped, you discover the largest thing being shipped is air. So companies like IKEA have air hunters who go around looking for empty space and designing it out. They now design their knockdown furniture uh, so that it packs as densely as possible so you get the most units in a truck and so that they're sized to fit the correct number in a truck so there isn't any air at the top either. Uh, <clears throat> we found with one uh, beverage company we worked with that they could put a whole row of extra product in the top of the truck just by taking a little bit of thickness out of their pallets uh, but they hadn't thought of that before. The biggest muda uh, is outside the truck. It's in the shape of the whole U.S. economy. Uh, and if you look at the flow of mass, the stuff, the, the, the molecules that we <clears throat> mine or grow, and then ask what happens to it, the, the answer is quite astonishing. This flow of stuff that we borrow from the earth and move around, process, put back, uh, is about 20 times your body weight per person per day, uh, only counting water returned dirty, not water returned clean. <coughs> and this flow of stuff, uh, only 7% gets into products. 93% is lost in extraction and manufacturing. Six-sevenths of the molecules in the products get thrown away after one use or no use as they're consumer ephemerals. 1% of that huge mass flow ends up in durable products. And then when we're done with them, only 2% of that gets recycled, reused, remanufactured, composted. So when you add it all up, the system is 99.98% pure waste. And in a broader sense, that's what a lot of these trucks are moving around. Uh, <clears throat> that, that amount of muda has got to be the biggest business opportunity in the whole economy. And as we gradually fix it over decades, there will be a lot less transport of all kinds needed, about 28 plus percent of our mobility fuel now goes to move things, not people, but that's mostly waste, mostly muda, uh, and uh, I think that's that business opportunity will take quite a while to bring out because it means changes in business models uh, that reward producer and customer for doing more and better with less for longer, but it's going to have profound implications and very beneficial ones for uh, the health of our economy and of the earth. Risk averse, conservative, one to two percent profit margins. Very tough industry to work with, the trucking industry. What do you think the key is to turning this sector, and making it more energy efficient, in all its operations? Well, technically, it appears we can cost effectively triple the efficiency of trucks. We can make much better use of trucks by uh, <clears throat> some simplifications and also by harmonizing rules between different jurisdictions because the the size and idling and weight limits are different by state, even by county. Uh, 
uh, so it's, it's really a nightmare for the truckers to have to navigate through. Uh, uh, the traditional approach to changing any industry is by regulation. I think carrots work better than sticks though, let alone sticks painted orange. So uh, uh, we were coming up with some quite creative ideas for helping the truckers get what they want uh, to make their business work better in a way that doesn't really cost anybody else. For example, uh, <clears throat> if you have uh, a clean, green, efficient rig, maybe you should get priority in going through way stations or just be able to drive through. Uh, I came up with the thing in our group, our, our military has <clears throat> an organization that is very good at buying price hedged fuel. Uh, in other words, they use derivatives to take out a lot of the volatility in price, which is such a huge burden, especially on small operators. And maybe if you have a sufficiently efficient green truck, you should get access to purchasing your fuel that way, piggybacking on the government purchases for the military. Uh, there are a number of other uh, creative ideas the group came up with. Uh, and I, I think some that, that could influence federal policy where there's now an opportunity for real leadership uh, could be the most consequential. Because right, right now a lot of the policies have been really siloed or stovepiped and we even have different government departments pursuing their own agendas without coordination. And they've been across purposes in the past. That needs to be fixed. Is there anything that's really surprised you here today or yesterday? Well, it's not so much a surprise as, as a very gratifying uh, emergence of a, uh, <clears throat> a great sense of common cause among very disparate players uh, who might not have thought they had much in common but are really enjoying each other and coming up with great new stuff. Anything else? No. Nope. Thank you very much. Keep on trucking. <laughs> <laughs>